Samson went down to Timnah, and at Timnah he saw one of the daughters of the Philistines. Then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw one of the daughters of the Philistines at Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother said to him, Is there not a woman among the daughters of your kinsmen, or among all your people, that you must go to take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. His father and mother did not know that it was from the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against the Philistines. At that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then Samson went down with his father and mother to Timnah, and he came to the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, a young lion roared against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion asunder as one tears a kid, and he had nothing in his hand. But he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a while he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion, and honey. He scraped it out into his hands, and went on, eating as he went. And he came to his father and mother, and gave some to them, and they ate. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the carcass of the lion. And his father went down to the woman, and Samson made a feast there. For so the young men used to do. And when the people saw him, they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said to them, Let me now put a riddle to you. If you can tell me what it is within the seven days of the feast, and find it out, then I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty festal garments. But if you cannot tell me what it is, then you shall give me thirty linen garments and thirty festal garments. And they said to him, Put your riddle, that we may hear it. And he said to them, Out of the eater came something to eat, out of the strong came something sweet. And they could not in three days tell what the riddle was. On the fourth day they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband to tell us what the riddle is, lest we burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you invited us here to impoverish us? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, You only hate me, you do not love me. You have put a riddle to my countrymen, and you have not told me what it is. And he said to her, Behold, I have not told my father nor my mother, and shall I tell you? She wept before him the seven days that their feast lasted, and on the seventh day he told her, because she pressed him hard. Then she told the riddle to her countrymen, and the men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and killed thirty men of the town, and took their spoil, and gave the festal garments to those who had told the riddle. In hot anger he went back to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. After a while, at the time of wheat harvest, Samson went to visit his wife with a kid, and he said, I will go into my wife in the chamber, but her father would not allow him to go in. And her father said, I really thought that you utterly hated her, so I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Please take her instead. And Samson said to them, This time I shall be blameless in regard to the Philistines, when I do them mischief. So Samson went and caught three hundred foxes, and took torches, and he turned them tail to tail and put a torch between each pair of tails. And when he had set fire to the torches, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up the shocks and standing grain, as well as the olive orchards. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? And they said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. And Samson said to them, If this is what you do, I swear I will be avenged upon you, and after that I will quit. And he struck them hip and thigh with great slaughter. And he went down and stayed in the cleft of the rock of Etam. Then the Philistines came up and encamped in Judah, and made a raid on Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? They said, 
we have come up to bind Samson, to do to him as he did to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Etam, and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What then is this that you have done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so have I done to them. And they said to him, We have come down to bind you, that we may give you into the hands of the Philistines. And Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. They said to him, No, we will only bind you and give you into their hands. We will not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting to meet him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes which were on his arms became as flax that has caught fire, and his bonds melted off his hands. And he found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, and put out his hand and seized it, and with it he slew a thousand men. And Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, have I slain a thousand men. When he had finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone out of his hand, and that place was called Ramath Lehi. And he was very thirsty, and he called on the Lord and said, You have granted this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and shall I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? And God split open the hollow place that is at Lehi, and there came water from it. And when he drank, his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore the name of it was called en Hakore. It is at Lehi to this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines twenty years. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring, mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat, nor about your body, what you shall put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O men of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be of anxious mind. For all the nations of the world seek these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things shall be yours as well. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Provide yourselves with purses that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded and your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the marriage feast, so that they may open to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will put on his apron and have them sit at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch, or in the third, and finds them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the householder had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have been awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? 
And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his master will set over his household, to give them their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Truly, I tell you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will punish him, and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant, who knew his master's will, but did not make ready or act according to his will, shall receive a severe beating. But he, who did not know, and did what deserved a beating, shall receive a light beating. Every one to whom much is given, of him will much be required. And of him to whom men commit much, they will demand the more. I came to cast fire upon the earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how I am constrained until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For henceforth, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against her mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. As we learn from a young age, every privilege brings with it a certain level of responsibility. The Lord grants a powerful anointing to Samson to be judge over Israel. Despite his Nazarite vow from birth, Samson exhibits spiritual immaturity and an undisciplined life. It seems, in fact, that he is determined to act in direct contradiction to his calling. As soon as he grows up, he falls in love with a Philistine woman, a member of an enemy people. He eats unclean food in the form of honey from a lion's dead carcass. Beyond that, he abuses his God-given anointing to murder people. He abuses his privileges much like the irresponsible steward from Jesus' parable, who beats the other servants and wastes his master's wealth on drunkenness. Jesus sums up the lesson powerfully. Everyone to whom much is given of him will much be required. If we abuse the gifts and privileges we are given, spending them for our own good only and not for the good of others, we show that our treasure is not in the Lord. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your treasure?